Hello. A couple months ago, I agreed to do some illustrations for a nonprofit called Sageland Collaborative. They want me to design six stickers. They want a pronghorn, a boreal toad. They want some Great Salt Lake birds. They want a bumblebee and some milkweed. They want a trail cam with a mountain lion and they want a beaver representing some healthy streams. What I'm gonna do now is draw as many boreal toads as I can. Oh, sorry about that. Then move to digital after I do the initial sketches. I haven't used my Posca pens in a really long time. This is kind of like a throwaway sketchbook. Black Posca. And that one's completely crusty, dusty. I think mm, mm, that could be okay. Let's see how I feel. When I say everything starts in my sketchbook, I mean everything. I rarely ever open a Procreate document blank without a sketch that I've done on paper first. I think Bunny is a different pen. I love that I live in an era where digital tools are so accessible, but there's something about the scratching of my pen on paper that just lights up my creativity and having to fill a whole page of different designs before I land on the right composition really helps me figure things out quickly. Something that's actually like secretly kind of hard is drawing irregular spots. Like try not to make them look too thought out. Just like turn my brain off or try to and just be like, okay, hand, be irregular because your human brain wants to put everything in a line. I love this pen. I always forget that I love this pen, Chumbo Fudenosuke, but it's the like softer one. Can't really be that precise because the instrument doesn't let you. I'm trying to hold my pen like way back here if I can, especially for the dots. It's the fun part. When I'm trying to draw a specific animal, it's really helpful to do as many different iterations as I can to get all the different angles and poses, partially so that I can get a better understanding of what that thing actually looks like. And I also just feel like your first try is never the best one. I'm always more warmed up after three or four drawings and filling up a whole page is just so satisfying. This is kind of a short week of work for me because I'm gonna go on a little trip with my friends tomorrow. I was thinking that I would paint this table. It's kind of hard with the art studio. I want it to be aesthetically pleasing because I want to enjoy spending time here, but I also don't want to spend so much time making it like so presentable because that's not the point. The point is to like have a creative space that's functional, but I would also like it to look nice. Anyway, let's go to the desert. Road trip.
so back in the studio. I've been working on a couple like client illustration projects this month, so I haven't had that much time to work on this. The way that I'm thinking about approaching these larger paintings is like section by section. The sky could use a little bit of touch up. I think there is too much bright underpainting showing around the clouds. And then I need to work on this bottom section of the skull and then this outside section and then this shadow section here. I'm gonna go to figure drawing at six and it's like three right now, so. Allow me to give you a peek inside of my ADHD adult brain. Like an hour ago, I got back from dropping off some stickers at the local Museum of Contemporary Art, and I started counting stickers. Ski bunnies, they need to go in these sticker packs like this. They're just like business card material that's scored and folded over, and then I attach it with a stapler. So I was like, okay, where are those? <laughs> I found three of them and I was like, okay, maybe I just need to order more. But just to be safe, I'm gonna go through all of my drawers. And what ended up happening was I took everything out of the drawers. Then I decided that I wanted to rearrange the bookshelf. I started feeling like I wanted to put things away. <laughs> The rest of the studio is a disaster, but this looks nice, kind of. An hour later, I just finally found the rest of these. So, you know, that's good. Yeah, start now. Lucy, hi. You're so sweet. She's so stinky right now. <laughs> Something I'm realizing about my workflow is that I really enjoy having something going on in the background that's like a low pressure art project that's usually just for me that I can turn to when I need to either warm up or just make something that isn't on my to-do list. And that's where these fake books come in. I saw this on a newsletter I'm subscribed to called Draw Together with Wendy Mack. She shared a bunch of other artists who have made these fake books where they paint a title and pages on the side of a little wooden block and the idea really appealed to me so I went to my local thrift store and picked up these signs and just of them. There's so many pieces of wood like this at the thrift store and I definitely recommend trying this yourself. It was so fun to come up with the titles and then just so satisfying to paint something three-dimensional. It's really nice to do things like this for myself in between big projects like larger paintings and illustration gigs. It makes me feel like I'm in control of my creative process again. It felt like taking a big stretch in between sessions of working on more serious projects. So obviously we have have a field guide to tiny eggs, duh. It's the 50th anniversary updated edition because, you know, these things have been around for a long time. Then we have Sexy Shells, a brief but very queer history. Title, inspiration from my friend Amy. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> and then there's Look Down, which is a novel by Dirtz Barkley. <laughs> I like to think that this is a thriller. I saw this TikTok where this guy was showing all of the books in Barnes & Noble in the thriller section, and they all had dark green covers with yellow letters, and I thought that would be fun to explore. Here they all are together. I love the sides of them, and they were so fun to paint. Oh, also I painted my table red. This was so fun. You should definitely try it. I could do like, uh, I could do like hobbies. This is hobbies. So there's like hiking, painting. It's pretty simple. So it's drawing. So it's really fun. You should take a sign language class. I want to keep learning. Like wherever I go to next, I want to find a sign language place and keep learning. Hello. It's sunny today. It's the first day of March. I got a haircut yesterday. I'm growing out a pixie cut, so that's painful. I asked for a 
bob <laughs> and she was like we can't quite give you a bob it's kind of in between a bob and a mullet so it's a bullet <laughs> Anyway, I'm making these paintings for a group show that's happening in early April. I'm supposed to have four paintings for the show and I have one fully finished, this one, which is almost done, and then two that are undone. Com it, complete mysteries. I don't even have sketches for them or anything. So I really have to finish this. I feel like I have so much to do and not enough time. Story of my life. We are gonna finish this. Maybe not right this very second, but we're gonna finish it. I'm gonna finish it. I don't know what you're gonna do. I've painted pretty much this entire painting with these three brushes. They're from this set. I don't know if you can buy them individually, but I got them at Michael's and they're Princeton snap brushes and they're made for acrylics and they just have this like, they snap. I like the stiffness of them. And then I also got these ones from Royal and Lang Nickel and they have this little like grippy spot, but these ones are a similar like springiness to these. I feel like there's a sweet spot with acrylic brushes. Some people say that brushes don't matter at all, which like they kind of don't, but they matter to me. <laughs> partially for like the user experience and partially because I like to get crisp lines sometimes. Squares or flat brushes mostly. I used to use only exclusively round brushes, but I've been loving a flat. You can get so many different things going on with a flat brush. Princeton, sponsor me. I want these and I don't want to have to buy a pack of them. I want to buy them individually. So what's up with that? So the only thing I'm kind of struggling with is the color of the sky. I just think it's a little bit too teal. And with this pink, it's reminding me of those cups, like the 90s jazz cups, like Taco Bell. <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like it's not looking right. Just the clouds and the mountains. I think they're the right value, just not the right color. It's gonna be hanging next to this painting. And so I'm sort of thinking about how the colors are gonna work together. And I just feel like there isn't any teal in this painting, but there is a lot of lilac. Just repaint this guy. I don't know if I'm gonna sand this or not. In January, I started taking a ceramics class. I had some free time, knew it was gonna be a slow month and just thought I should treat myself to something artistic, a little hobby that I could have on the side. I am just a human made up of hobbies at this point, but I've been going every week since the beginning of January. And I also have some open studio time where I'm able to make some things and it's been so freaking fun. I've been really into making mugs lately. I love the process from throwing the pot, trimming it, making the handle, attaching the handle, and then I've been painting these designs on with this red underglaze. I'm using the one from Amico. I like being forced to use a single color and try to think of the negative space that the glaze is going to be in. And I've been pulling from my sketchbook for the little designs and I've been thinking of these as like little doodle mugs. I've been making a lot of these, so at some point I might have to sell them, but for now they're just for me and I've been taking the unbisked mugs to my studio to paint them just because it's a more calming environment than the community clay studio. And just like with the fake books, it's like a nice project to do in the meantime time in between projects if I'm waiting for feedback or if I'm waiting for paint to dry. Holding the cold greenware in my hands while I just kind of turn my brain off and flow with the red underglaze is like the best feeling ever. Once the pieces go through their first firing, I paint on a wax on the red design, and then I've been dipping them in this white glaze that kind of results in this speckly look, and I've just been loving how these are turning out. <laughs>
Hey, it's me again. We've come to a natural stopping point, I think. I finished a painting. It looks like this. It's called The Far Away is Like So Nearby, kind of riffing off of the Georgia O'Keeffe painting from The Far Away Nearby. I feel like I can't keep making these skull paintings without giving Georgia a little bit of a nod. I have two sizes of prints available on my website if you want to get a copy for your house or for your collection. I wanted to quickly plug that I have a Patreon. I send out a sticker and a postcard every single month. And I also record a monthly podcast where I talk about things I'm inspired by and some stuff that I don't really share anywhere else. So if you're interested, all that's on Patreon. YouTube has just alerted me that less than half of the people that watch my videos are subscribed to my channel. I don't really understand. It doesn't hurt anyone. It doesn't cost anything. Just do it. Join us. Join us. Oh, also I did two poster designs this month. I did this one for a poetry reading. And then I did this one for a campaign to protect birds on the Great Salt Lake. I've been doing a lot of Great Salt Lake stuff lately. I love it. Those stickers that I was working on in the beginning of the video are not finished. I have sent some rough drafts and they haven't got back to me yet. So I'll show those in another video. You got to subscribe to see what happens. If you're new here, my name is Kristen Vardnega. My friends call me Chris and the internet knows me as Little Tiny Egg. If you want to keep up with stuff that I do on a more daily basis, I post on Instagram. I'm over there quite a lot, more than I would like to be. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions you want me to answer. I will gladly answer them. Let me know if you had a favorite part of this video, something that you would like me to include in future vlogs. I'm sorry there wasn't very many Nora shots. I know that people love the Nora shots. I love you. I really hope you're doing okay. The world is a scary place. Spring is upon us. I hope there's flowers blooming where you are. I will see you next time. I gave a little kiss last time and people liked it. So that's just for you. See you later.